The wolf, ferocious, odious and destructive when living, and when dead he is perfectly useless. Those words were written over 200 years ago, and are what we call in technical circles a bit harsh. But the sentiment is common, and when looking at the world of the wolf, you have to cut through centuries of anti-wolf propaganda. Don't believe anything unless you've got reliable evidence to back it up. See? I'm not even reading a book on wolves. So let's take a look at the wolf while avoiding all the usual cliches and stereotypes. Let's start with the basics. What is a wolf? Well, lots of animals have wolf in the name, but it's generally accepted that there are two species of true wolf, the grey wolf and the red wolf. I say generally because wolf taxonomy is a complex field, and one will neatly sidestep by concentrating only on the grey wolf. The grey wolf, Canis lupus, is a carnivore belonging to the canid family, which also contains foxes, jackals and dogs. Grey wolves generally live in packs, a family unit consisting of the breeding pair, pups and yearlings. Wolves communicate through urination, which marks a pack's territory, and also for the much more glamorous behaviour of howling. OK David, do the noise! Often a prelude to meeting a grisly end in a Hollywood movie, Howling allows members of the pack to locate one another, and also warns neighbouring packs to stay away. It's more of a football chant than a war cry. Each pack holds a territory that varies hugely in size, where they hunt and rear pups. A pack can take down and kill prey up to ten times the size of an adult wolf. Prey species differs depending on location, but mainly includes ungulates hooved mammals such as deer, elk and moose. So where can you find wolves? Well, grey wolves once had the biggest range compared with any other land mammal. Today, the distribution is greatly reduced. What happened? We happened. Humans. In the deer episode, David mentioned humans' attitudes towards wolves were once much more amiable than in recent history. If you want proof, I present Exhibit A, a dog. By about 10,000 BC, humans had domesticated a branch of wolves to form man's best friend. A little sexist. We tinkered with the recipe through artificial selection, but today every dog is descended from a wolf. Even this one. And then we started rearing livestock, the perfect meal for a wolf and all the more tempting as agriculture diminished their other sources of prey. And so, we started exterminating them, and during the 18th and 19th century, this process was running at full speed in the United States. The consequences? In Yellowstone National Park, wolves were gone by around the 1920s. From then on, park officials noticed excessive tree browsing by elk, so they started a cull, reducing elk numbers by about half. Oddly, this did absolutely nothing to help trees recover. In fact, recovery wasn't seen until after the wolf was reintroduced to the park by conservationists in 1995. A complex series of changes followed the wolf's return. General consensus shows that they brought about a trophic cascade, similar to that mentioned in the deer episode. They reduced the effect of elk browsing which allowed the recovery and recruitment of trees that were previously over-browsed, including aspen, cottonwood and willow. But wolves didn't bring about the trophic cascade by reducing elk numbers. We've already seen that reducing elk numbers by culling just doesn't work. No, instead the wolves restored something called the landscape of fear. The landscape of fear is the perceived risk of predation now that wolves have returned. Elk won't go gobbling plants where they themselves might be eaten. Studies have shown that elk altered their behaviour since wolves returned. They increased their vigilance and altered their movements and distribution. And it is this altered behaviour that has released Yellowstone's trees from browsing pressure. But things are never quite that simple. And there are other factors, including climate change, that are influencing patterns of vegetation recovery. 
Regardless, Yellowstone seems like an ecological success story. And, as an added bonus, wolf-related tourism contributes billions of dollars to the US economy every year. But not everything is peachy. There are indirect conflicts between farmers and wolves. Wolves still predate on livestock, with annual compensation payments averaging around $64,000 in 2004 and 2005. Wolves were protected by the Endangered Species Act since 1973, but given their recent success, they've been delisted in many states. In Wyoming, amid much protest on both sides of the debate, the delisting and relisting of wolves has looked like a political yo-yo. So wolves face an optimistic, if uncertain, future. That was the exploits of wolves in Yellowstone. What about wolves here in the UK? We used to have them, but where did they go? And will they ever return? Sounds like good subject matter for an online YouTube documentary. Leave it with me. Thank <laughs> you.